sharing my screen in a moment. Please let me know if you guys can see it. Hopin is a great platform, but we're all just getting used to it right now. So hopefully you should be able to see five keys to success in product, my name, Nafisa Rauji, and where I currently work, which is VMware Pivotal Labs. Awesome, thank you, Ashley. Okay, so to get started, um, hopefully you intend to be in this space. This is five keys to success in product. I created a lot of content that um, sort of runs the gamut depending on where you are in your product management journey. So please answer the poll for this session just so I can help sort of tailor the content that I have depending on where you are because I want this to be a best use of everyone's time. Of course, I kind of have a presentation already, so a lot of this is predetermined, but this will help me with the context that I add. Awesome, so let's get started. Five keys to success in product. And here's a little agenda, because I don't think you can really be a product manager without lining out your agenda, intended outcomes, setting expectations, looking at a timeline, et cetera. Today is basically get in, loser, we're PMing. Not sure if you guys have seen Mean Girls, definitely one of my favorite movies. Um, so we're gonna be talking about my background. Who am I anyway? Why am I on this screen talking to you? What is product management? I think a lot of times, for honestly, for like the first year that I was in product, I had no clue <laughs> what a product manager was. Because we're essentially, especially as I get into more of a leadership role, uh, building a career that doesn't exist yet. I think for the vast majority of us, even now, if you're in undergrad, depending where you are, there isn't a product management degree. Um, and product management is still trying to be figured out by a lot of companies. And I will speak more to that when I talk about what I do. So let's talk about what is product management. Why do I even like it? Why do I spend all this time trying to be a better product manager? Why do I want to continue down this path? The five keys. There are so many lessons, insights, tidbits that can help you have a successful product career. But I'm here to, uh, oh, that's a great question. Can you guys hear me? Before I keep talking. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. I'm also going to talk about this. I'm a product manager, a uh, product manager podcaster. So let me just move my camera, my microphone closer just in case it helps. If you guys have any sound issues throughout this session, just let me know in the chat. I'm keeping an eye on it and I can, I can pivot appropriately. Um, so then five lessons I've learned the hard way. Like I mentioned, there are a lot of different lessons, tips that you can give for someone in product management because this is such a nebulous career, but these are sort of the five things that have carried me throughout different environments and different uh, companies as I'm sort of trying to figure out my bearings, get my foundation and, and ultimately do well there and, and drive a product that is successful. So then next steps, what should you do with this information? I think that a lot of times, especially because tech is such a hot industry and product management is maybe unbiased, one of the hotter roles, you can get a lot of like nebulous advice and it's like, okay, that was great, but what do I do now, especially in my role? So we're gonna be talking about next steps, what to do with this information after this session. And then finally Q and A, what questions do you guys have for me? Um, I want this to be like half Q and A, let's make it a discussion. Uh, even if you wanna turn on your camera to ask a question or if you prefer just talking in the chat, like I mentioned, I am checking the chat room as you guys are putting in comments and questions. So this will be uh, more so discussion because I wanna make sure I'm able to provide helpful, honest insights for you wherever you are in your product journey. Awesome. So let's move on to who I actually am. Of course, I look a little different in my headshot, you know, with a little contour uh, and my friend who was an amazing photographer taking the picture. But my name is Nafisa. I am a senior product manager at VMware Pivotal Labs. For context, I joined Pivotal Labs. Well, I'll get into when I joined, but Pivotal Labs got acquired by VMware, I guess a year ago in the pandemic. Everything is like, what is time anymore? Um, P VMware is a global software company that specializes in cloud services. We build, maintain, and operate for our clients in some context. So we build the cloud infrastructure, we maintain it through our mission labs and a lot of other services we provide, and we also operate as well. I work more so in the build part, building web and uh, mobile software apps for our clients. So I'm an award-winning product manager. I can officially say that <laughs> at this point, I received the uh, Accelerating Our Best Award, which is the highest tier award that an employee in VMware Global can achieve. I am the co-founder of TextGiving Nonprofit. Hopefully you guys all know what TextGiving is at this point, but we are a nonprofit with the mission of building a more equitable tech industry and tech future by upskilling the black and brown folks who are often overlooked but have quite a bit of potential that we wanna tap into. 
outside of my nine to five, I am the host of Everyday Social Club podcast, which is a podcast all about how black and brown people are finding our sense of happiness, personally, professionally, all of the above spiritually. And then if you guys are looking to connect with me, of course, you can click on my profile and go to my LinkedIn link there. But I also have an a convenient bit.ly, uh, which is bit.ly slash Nafi LinkedIn. A lot of my friends call me Nafi. It's less characters. So you can also find me and my LinkedIn profile that way. Awesome. So before we begin, let's talk a little bit about my work history. I started working in tech in college and undergrad more from a marketing perspective. My formal education is a BBA in marketing. Uh, during my time in college, I loved money. So I was like working so much all the time. I had at least one job and at least one internship my entire college career, including summers. Um, those, I think sophomore fall year, I had two internships, a job, I was competing for Ms. Black and Gold, and I had a, um, I was marketing chair of my community service organization. I've always just loved being extremely involved and being close to the action for business. So you will see me with my very sad red hair phase. No apologies to anyone in here if any women have red hair. It just didn't work for me, as you can see. Um, but this is me with who was the head of Sony Electronics USA. I started my true product career without even knowing what product was yet, working for Sony, identifying the needs of the Temple University community as students, professors, families of both of those people uh, who were looking, they were looking to sell Sony electronics to them. So I learned the technical aspects of how even a camera works. And then I was selling products, not selling, well, proverbially selling, but marketing products and doing actual user acceptance testing in terms of like, can someone use this computer well? Does this uh, wireless speaker work? My favorite part, is this PS3 attractive to college students? Or are they gonna go more towards Xbox? Because of this experience, I am wholly team PlayStation to this day. My PS4 is not yet here, but let's all hope it gets here at some point. Uh, my official post-grad career, I started at Deloitte Digital. I accepted uh, my offer like right at the end of my college career. And I was the first person from Temple University to be recruited directly into Deloitte Digital, which is the more digital software mobile apps that we talk about, but like in a more uh, creative digital agency format. I was at Deloitte Digital for three years before transferring to the private sector because I started at Deloitte Digital in the federal market in the DC office. I did went to essentially like the membership based Uber for private aviation. I worked on their members app, which is really cool because I met a lot of like athletes and actors and millionaires and billionaires who just didn't want to fly Southwest. Um, so they would book a private jet through us. And then we would create basically, I basically created a checkout flow that made it really easy for them to request a private jet. So if you see your favorite rapper standing on Instagram, it's very likely they do not own that jet. They rented it and they probably rented it through wheels up. And then July 2019, I moved on over to Pivotal Labs, which is now VMware Pivotal Labs, and that's where I've been. So as a product manager, senior product manager at VMware Pivotal Labs now, I am part consultant, part enabler, and part product manager. What that means is that I am deployed or tasked to different clients in different industries. Before the pandemic, I was flying Monday through Thursday to clients. I, I brought my little dog with me in the hotel. Um, and what we did was we enabled product teams on client sites to be better software development teams while actively building software hand in hand with them. This was like an extreme programming format where I was paired with a product manager, the designer was paired with a designer and each engineer was constantly working with another engineer to build code. And that format helps us learn faster. It helps us build more viable code. And it was really interesting because my job was to often tell people who were older than me, who had been in the industry longer than me, how to be better at their jobs. I think this opportunity really able enabled me to be a better teacher, facilitator, and also develop an executive presence, which I will go into why it's so important for product. So what is product management? Funny you ask. I would hope you want to know what product management is, since a lot of you guys answered in the poll that you're just getting your feet wet in product. Officially, if you look at, I don't know, I don't want to say Merriam-Webster because I don't think product management is in Merriam-Webster, but maybe if you did crack the code or, or what have you, the role of product manager is to guide the success of a product and lead the cross-functional team building it, which sounds vague as hell. If you guys only got that one sentence for your job description applied, you probably wouldn't know what to do your first day on job, right? Um, so I'm going to go a little bit more into detail into like what actually this looks like every day. And as you can imagine, if you ask any product manager, like, what does your day-to-day -day look like? The answer is going to be 
it depends because quite honestly it does depend it depends on the uh, maturity of the organization the stage of development that the product is in the needs of the team and if there's a deadline coming up if it's the time of the week where you're about to have an iteration planning meeting or a sprint planning meeting where you're deciding what the team is going to work on for the next week or two weeks so many factors but i will say that pm if you look at this handy dandy um this graphic here, infographic in the middle of the slide, is the cross-section of customer business, UX, and technology. PMs constantly have their hands in multiple hats and have to cater to multiple, I don't wanna say customers, cause that can be confusing, but multiple uh, audiences, multiple stakeholders. We care just as much about the guy that's cutting the check for funding the team as we do care about the user that needs to, to download and retain and use the app and enjoy it, as we do the engineers and the CTOs who are trying to build a sustainable software that can grow with the needs of the organization. It's a lot to balance. So let's talk about what some of these roles look like. So if you ask someone what a product manager does, they might say that product managers accept stories, drive iterations. You're gonna hear me say iterations and sprints interchangeably because in extreme programming, we don't call them sprints, we call them iterations to allow time to adapt to, to new information and new needs. But when I say iteration, I mean sprint. When I say sprint, I mean iteration. So quite often uh, someone will say a product manager drives iteration and sprint goals. Um, and then sometimes they say that a product manager uh, prioritizes iteration and sprint stories, which in a backlog, which is basically the source of truth for a developer to be able to open up this list of requirements or stories or what they need to build. And like it's organized from what's next at the top and what's lowest priority at the bottom. So a product manager organizes those stories level of importance so that whenever a develop a good product manager whenever a developer opens up this backlog whether that's in a software called jira or pivotal tracker or uh, trello or what have you they're always able to know what they need to start working on next because it's at the top of the list and as then ideally if you're a good product manager there aren't any uh blockers so that person can start right away i Good question, Elisa. And then Husna, I'm going to answer your question at the end. Um, a product manager actually does help write stories. I believe that is one of the things I will name here. Um, sometimes the product owner will write stories, but oftentimes it is the product manager who is writing stories for the team. So depending on who you ask, you might hear someone say that a product manager clears obstacles for the team. Like I mentioned, we also interchangeably call them blockers. Um, facilitates those team events and ceremonies like that sprint planning or iteration planning session I just mentioned where the team is determining what the priorities are for the next week and what the developer should be working on for the next week. And then some people will say that product managers make sure goals are understood by the whole team. And when I say the whole team, what that looks like depends on the needs of the team, the needs of the uh, stakeholders, and what kind of product you're building. I've been on teams that had content strategists, UX designers, a different UX designer from a visual designer, back-end engineers, front-end engineers, Pivotal Labs um, operates on a model that has full stack engineers, an engineer that can do both, data engineers, uh, system architects. It just depends on the type of platform or type of product you're working on. And then some people will say that product managers formulate techniques for backlog management. So that can be like creating a process flow for appropriately approving a story or a piece of code that's attached to that story in the testing environment, uh, the acceptance environment, and then prod, which is like what you guys see when you log into Facebook or Instagram is the prod environment. And then some people will say that product managers identify market needs, own the roadmap and backlog, drive performance measures, and establish acceptance criteria, or like Elisa just mentioned, write user stories. So the fact of the matter is to be really a successful product manager, you, I'm also a big hip hop fan, so you're gonna see some references here. You have to be all three, plus you need to lay the pipeline for success with measurable OKRs. I don't know if any of you guys are Cam fans. That's like one of the songs I think like my kids will be cleaning the house too. Um, so ideally, I will say the type of roles you see are like Olaide just mentioned is product owner, product manager. You'll see scrum master, uh, product manager, project manager. I'm, I'm missing a couple. Um, so some of that depends on the maturity of the organization and how like cutting edge they are within the industry. A product owner, like Elida just asked, is more of someone who uh, is in charge of the team daily activities. They're not as much on the strategic side, which means, let me just go back real quick because this will help this visual. Isn't that convenient? Um, so if you look at the sort of top um, left 
of the, the screen, that like first three that I mentioned, that's more product owner. Like their job is just to make sure the team is running the way that the product manager set. So a product owner is involved in strategy. They don't really identify market needs. They're not owning the entirety of the roadmap. Usually the roadmap is communicated downwards to them. And then they help their team meet those goals by like, okay, I know that we need to build a new checkout flow because the product manager told me this was important. As a product owner, I had nothing to do with the research. I didn't create this strategy, but this is what was given to me. So I'm gonna support my product manager as a product owner by helping the team move along. So I'm gonna accept those stories. I'm gonna drive the next week's goals to help this upwards goal. And I'm gonna prioritize those stories within that week. Product owners are, are important for certain organizations, I would say, especially like older, larger organizations that are just more bureaucratic. But a lot of times you will see product managers who are doing all three on a team. Um, so like I could be still accepting stories, driving sprint iteration goals and prioritizing things for my team while also keeping an eye to market needs and driving the overall roadmap as well. Um, let me know if that answered your question, Alade. I, I hope that was clear enough. Feel free to type in the chat if you have any follow-up questions on that. Uh, Adorable Jasmine, you made a great question here asking if I'm technical. I'm gonna answer that at the end of the session, but that is a, that is a great uh, mention. Awesome, you're welcome. So then, like I said, a true successful product manager, if you're trying to work at a Facebook, an Amazon, a Google, a VMware one day, um, you really need to be able to do all three because at the end of the day, it's cheaper for companies if they're able to have someone who can do all three. And quite honestly, if you go to any cutting edge top of the industry company, they're not gonna have a traditional scrum master that is allotted full time to a singular team. What you'll see now, I think is more agile coaches who help set precedence for agile practices on a uh, practice level, like a, a department level, because it's just expensive. And so it's helpful to have those tools under your belt so that you can truly be that product manager that helps the team move along in that sprint, but also helps the business meet their overall goals. So why do I love it? Okay. I started, like I said, in product management. And if you guys have ever, not in product management, in marketing, in school, in, at Temple University, if you guys have ever heard anything about marketing, I think the one thing most people know about marketing is the four Ps, which is product, place, price, and promotion. Um, I love that because, I mean, I grew up in, a, in an immigrant family. I'm Afro-Indian, which means my dad's side's Indian, my mom's side's African, and we came to the United States in 1998. So uh, entrepreneurship is in my blood. I think anyone who is career any immigrant descent knows like our people just hustle like uh, entrepreneurship or being a quote unquote founder isn't a classy like cutting edge term it's like no my family needs to eat and I don't have I don't have the connections that come with nepotism in elite classes so I'm gonna find a way to make the money um so I grew up watching my biological father like have sugar factories and he still has a trucking company that goes from Uganda to Sudan, uh, to Sudan today and like technically yeah if he was at Stanford he'd be like yes I'm a I'm a founder of this of this unicorn startup that grew 200 percent in the first financial year but really it's just like entrepreneurism I think is something that was very natural and so for me growing up I balanced being a child of immigrants quite honestly um, and wanting to do really well, being the, I'm the first, I'm the youngest of six, and I'm the only sibling that grew up in the United States. So I had a lot of pressure of like, let me go do the right things, go to school, get the sound safe major and, and get the high paying job and enter the track that secures me a 401k. And then I can send money back to my cousin in Kampala that really wants 2k. So for me, I always had this flair and love of entrepreneurialism, being creative, being innovative, uh, especially maybe that's my ADD part of that. Um, but then I also balanced wanting to have a secure career and have the financial life that I wanted so I could help my family. Um, so I, I, did mar I did business because I did not want to be an engineer or a doctor, much to the chagrin of my immigrant parents that I am not a surgeon. But I wasn't quite at the point where looking at the statistics, quite frankly, for, for income, for people who graduated with a degree in communications or broadcast journalism, it just wasn't high enough for what I was trying to do for myself and my family. So I picked business and I picked marketing because marketing had those four Ps, product, pl pr product price, place, promotion. And I was like, whoa, I can do all this and make all these like entrepreneur-like decisions in the comfort of being paid by someone else and someone else helping me with my health insurance premium. That is excellent, why not? Um, 
And it wasn't until I, I kept falling into tech industry like marketing roles with Amazon, Windows, Sony, Lulu, which was a Yelp app basically for women dating where you could give Yelp reviews for men that you've have uh, spent time with so other women would know. Um, it wasn't, I kept falling into those tech industry roles and it wasn't until my friend who actually is like my third cousin apparently, he's from Congo, from Kinshasa, um, insisted that I join him for the Deloitte technology case competition because he just wanted to win. He was one of those kids that was like baby boss born in a suit, wanted to go to consulting. And I thought Deloitte was an accounting firm until that case competition. So it wasn't until that moment of entering that case competition, solving a case study. And it was a, I will never forget this. It was a simulated like how to get members of a government organization to wear wear ons to track their health data to lower insurance premiums. And I, we had to create a strategy and present this to like Deloitte partners and managers at my big age of 20 years old um, about how to, what kind of technology we would use, what would be the rollout, what would be the communications, what would be the possible return on investment. And that really excited me even further, especially when I saw, you know, the cachet that a name like Deloitte Consulting has and what I thought that would mean for me financially. I will say that a lot of times, especially as you guys, from what I'm understanding, let me just check the poll results. Yeah, 53% of you guys are just getting into product management and 35% of you know the rules but never applied it in a job. So I will say this, product management is, is a sexy name. It's a sexy position, it's a sexy career, especially if you don't wanna code, the next step is like, oh, well, I could be a product manager and then I'm a CEO of my own team. In your tech career, you're going to be uh, intrigued, seduced by the idea of these big names and these big companies, but really look for the potential impact that you yourself will have and if it's naturally in line with what you already like. We spend more time at work than we do with our friends and family at this point, and it's it's so important for all the other things you wanna set up in your life is your career, right? And so I will say that product management for me was a great opportunity because I found that, you know, marketing, product price, price, place, and promotion. It does translate to product management very well, as you'll see. Um, but being in certain roles and in certain companies that wasn't necessarily product manager, I still felt like I was just doing the mundane tasks every day. I was writing 600 system requirements that were decided by a group of, of 45 to 55 year old white men who've been in government for 13 years and never met me or never did any user research or didn't ask for any input. I was uh, running meetings that I felt could have been emails and feeling like this was a waste of time and taking away from, from developers actually writing code. And I found that product management in this transition really helped boost that original intent I had, which was entrepreneurialism and creativity and being multifaceted with the four Ps with the safety and opportunity of financial compensation and always knowing that I'm going to have a job that will, will do well for me. So that is why I really love product management. I've always been involved with Sims. My friends still, I mean, Sims with technology. Uh, my friends actually still joke on me because I do like to play Sims in my free time. But I've always loved apps, I've always loved phones, I've, I've always loved computers. I've, I, some, when I was a kid, I had to learn how to fix computers that I broke before my dad found out. And so for me, I think this is the greatest way to be as close to the user and be in technology as much as possible. We're really building products that make an impact. And I think it's so cool that we have one week iterations. So I can define something that I need the team to build in a very small sliver slice. And in a week, that thing could be in prod changing a user's life. I don't think that I'm biased, but I just don't think that there's any role out there that will really give me that type of immediate gratification, seeing that impact as well as having a, dis a hand in decision making like product management does. So after that long winded rant about why I love product management, we're gonna go into the actual five keys to success in product. I forgot to mention in my bio, I am a huge Beyonce stan, Bay Hive all the way. Did not get my Ivy Park, but it was it was very frustrating. Uh, Kalechi, is product management the same as Scrum Master? No, it is not. <laughs> so like I mentioned, um, Scrum Master, the, the concept of Scrum Master is specific to the agile framework. It the, the the rules or the duties of a scrum master is to promote strong agile practices within a team. They don't actually contribute to anything that has to do with development. So that will be like facilitating. Actually, let me go back for a second because this little infographic, it keeps being helpful. Okay, so uh, that one in the bottom right that says uh, clears obstacles, facilitates team ceremonies, and make sure goals are understood by the team. That those four duties are actually a traditional scrum master. I was very intentional in organizing these duties out. So if you look at that four, if you put a little box around it, that's the only thing that a scrum master does. And that's exactly why, as you can imagine, 
sorry, I don't know why my doc is popping up or someone that knows technology. Mm. But um, as you can imagine, like having one person paid six figures full time to one team to just do those four things is very expensive. So that's why whenever I'm talking to people who are starting in product management and they're like, Nafisa, I don't want to go back to school. There isn't a product management degree anyway. What things can I learn? What certs can I get to position myself as a great PM? I always say, get your certified scrum master certificate. It's also very easy. It's like 16 hours, but a lot of times, companies don't wanna pay for a full-time scrum master anymore. Like I mentioned, that might look more like an agile coach that works at the practices level and doesn't isn't involved in daily team life. And that means a lot of times these scrum master roles and responsibilities are transferred to the product master, uh, product manager, product master, that's what I am in my head, uh, product manager that's on the team. So that's why it's very helpful to have scrum master abilities, but be a product manager so you can get product manager salaries and opportunities. Um, Kalechi, let me know if that answered your question. Uh, if not, I'm more than happy to, to speak a little further on that. Awesome. So like I mentioned, now we're going to move on to the five keys to success in product. There are so many keys. There's not enough time. But these are like the five most pertinent things that I think are universal no matter what role you're in. Um, like I mentioned, I'm a big Beyonce Behav fan, so we're going to use Beyonce to teach you how to be great at product management. Like Beyonce is great at everything she does. So key number one, you are the official vibe setter. Upgrade You is one of my favorite Beyonce songs. It's just timeless. Um, so product managers who get the job and are actually applauded for the work they do set the vibe, the tone, the cadence, the ambiance, the environment for their team. I didn't start getting the applause and and, and awards and recognition that I thought I deserved for the work that I was doing working late until I took more of a leadership dynamic on my software development teams. Uh, we have to learn to influence without actually having influence. These software developers are usually 15 years my senior. They know things about code that I mean, I barely know anything about hardcore tech, which I will get into adorable Jasmine at the end of this, um, when it comes to like tech infrastructure and tech stacks. Of course, I'm trying to better myself in that arena because it's helpful, but at the end of the day, you will never know as much as a software engineer. And as soon as you're comfortable with that and operate in that, they will respect you so much more because quite often product managers have this uh, reputation of being like, know-it-alls who actually don't know anything and then try and come and tell an engineer what to do. And that's when you see short-lived product careers. Um, so you have to learn to influence without influencing. A lot of times that means befriending the vice president, the engineer, the designer, and the janitor authentically and all the same. I remember at my startup, one of the first things I did was I took the testing engineer out to coffee and then I had drinks with, with the COO, this chief operator, uh, chief officer of operations. It was like in the same week because you have to really invest in people individually and make sure they feel heard, respected, considered, and prioritized so that they're open to hearing what you have to say. So by being the official vibe setter of the team, I am always bubbly. I am always positive. I am always trying to look out for the quietest person on the Zoom call, emphasis on Zoom call because we're all working remote. So that way everyone on the team feels empowered and happy to be there. And when people are happy to be on the team, they're their best selves and they do the best work. And then when those uncomfortable conversations come about, it's a lot easier to get to a consensus when, when people aren't already on edge and on defense. I think of it as the same way as having my group of friends or, or being in a relationship. So like Beyonce said, I can do for you what Martin did for the people. Um, I think that a product manager sets the tone and cadence. We cannot do the work for people. We cannot tell people what to do, but we can provide a great ambiance, a great environment, make sure people can speak up about their individual concerns. So A, I don't know everything about UX and development. So I need people who do know more to speak up and feel comfortable doing so when I'm making a mishap and B, so that we can get through all those hard conversations and just focus on driving impact, which is what, what we're here to do. So key number two, you are an executive of the team, but sort of, don't get crazy. So this quote here, you just might be a black bill makes Bill Gates in the making, I think is a perfect uh, sample for this, for this key. As product manager, you set the strategy, the direction for the team. You represent the team in business meetings with stakeholders who, who sets your developer salaries. Uh, and you steer the ship on the right course. You set the priorities for what people are working on the next week, next month, uh, next financial year. So you truly are the most executive person on your team. And I think the moment I realized that as a product manager is when I did better. I'm quite frankly, usually one of the few women on the team, one of the few black women on the team, definitely the only Afro Indian in any situation so far in my career. And then I'm also the youngest. But the, re the moment I realized like, 
people need to have trust that you're going to represent them well in team meetings and executives need to have trust that you actually know what you're talking about because their their dollars on the line you know the way i think about it is whenever i'm upskilling or coaching other product managers in my job if someone comes to you and says hey I'm spending $50,000 of my money on this decision you just made. Why are you making this decision? You need to be able to coolly, confidently, and with data explain the decisions you're making and also pivot when you need to. Uh, these words in your presentation, oh, they aren't legible. I didn't realize that, sorry about that. Let me, hold on one moment. We're gonna, we're gonna fix this really quickly because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm talking about. Let's see, this is the problem with trying to move uh, Google Slides, because that's usually what we work with, to uh, PowerPoint. And then back, hold on one second. And this is another key uh, skill for product managers is to pivot quickly. Let's see, we can just do Arial actually. So while I'm changing the font really quickly, let me change some, uh, let me answer some questions here. So who gives the PM direction of what product? The stakeholders are the PM pitching ideas. Okay, so in, an organ in a good organization, the PM is supplying the information that helps business leaders give direction. Like I mentioned in that right-hand side of the slide that I went through about what a PM does, we're keeping an eye on market needs and the needs of our users. So ideally, in a healthy organization, the stakeholders, the leadership should be coming to you to talk about, hey, like, this is what we want to do. Like, we want to, I don't know, increase our usership for this group uh, by 22%. Do you think this is a good idea? Do you have any information or data on where we are in the market or the needs of the market to help us identify if this really makes the most sense for where we're heading? In a bad organization, the stakeholders make decisions without any input from the how you say any input from the product managers and then the product managers are like shit why are we doing this let me try to sort of figure it out anyway because i want to keep my job so that's where it really depends on the context and the health of the team Elida, let me know if that answered your your question well and if it didn't i can i can give it another crack okay i'm going to reshare my screen now and hopefully it's a bit clearer can you guys see the text now Awesome. Thank you guys. If there's anything, like I said, I can pivot very quickly. So I want to make sure this is as helpful as possible. So like I said, you set the strategy, you represent the team in business meetings with, with presidents and, and vice presidents and COOs, like I mentioned alike. And that is super helpful for, for representing yourself well and, and achieving confidence and trust. You cannot do your job as a product manager if you haven't achieved any trust because you have to be able to make decisions that people have to follow through on. And if they don't trust you, they're not going to follow through on those. And then people are going to ask why no one met with uh, no one met the, the goals. And people come to the product manager at the end of the day when the software team fails. So you have to be able to 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 be able to uh, represent yourself and your team very well. How often do you meet with executives? Ooh, that depends on the role, Devon. Um, so let me think about the right way to answer this. It, it really depends on the role and the health of the organization. So a lot of times, because of my current role, my job is to upskill software teams that I'm deployed to. So I'm meeting with executives every two weeks, maybe. Um, and then like mid-level VPs, like every week. In a traditional, like in industry PM role, you're probably meeting with folks like once a month um, to, to really just talk about progress. And it also depends on where the product is in the life cycle. If you're still in the discovery phase, which is where you're like making a proof point for if this product, product will be viable financially and just from an experience in meeting business goals, um, it's, it's that beginning phase where you're not, you're not joining an Instagram or a Facebook that's been standing. Maybe you are part of the beginnings of a Facebook or Instagram. You're meeting with executives a lot more because they're determining where they're gonna put their dollars in their budget. So that in that scenario, you are definitely meeting with executives more. What level does involvement does the product manager have in the management of the project's budget? That also depends on the company. So many of these questions are, it depends. If you're in a startup, you're definitely way more involved. 
Um, if you're not, what usually happens is it's like at the end of the financial year in a lot of companies when they're like looking at how they want to spend their budget next, you're pulling all the numbers for how well your team did and the impact you did at the end of the year to make the petition or the argument for more money. So in some ways you like are the feeder of information, but you're not the decider of the budget, if that makes sense, Alex. Let me know if it doesn't. Like I said, you guys, very open to feedback. I have an eye on the chat the whole time. Okay, so key number three, get comfortable questioning yourself and being questioned. A good product manager does not mind questions. In fact, we invite it. Whenever I have a meeting and people aren't asking questions, I will stop all the slides and say like, hey, are you guys paying attention? Because we need to make sure we're all in agreement. So let's let's get these questions going. Um, questions are a really good thing. It, it validates my understanding because you honestly don't know if you know something until you teach it or have to come explain it to someone else. It validates assumptions because a lot of times we're moving very quickly. So we have to make these uh, treat assumptions as facts sometimes. And sometimes people treat assumptions as facts without validating it. And what I mean when I say that is you could say, like I'm on Twitter, right? And a lot of times people will say like, oh, Twitter, Twitter is for being honest and Instagram is for flexing. So someone on an Instagram team or, or on a product that needs to use Instagram might make the assumption like, oh yeah, everyone on Instagram is just six figures making so much money. That is an assumption. You might make product decisions based on that assumption. Like, oh, because everyone on Instagram that I see makes so much money and is always traveling and happy, it doesn't make sense to uh, market, I don't know, self-help depression tools because no one on that app is, is, is upset or dealing with things because they all post only the highlights of their life. That is an expensive assumption because you are now making product decisions based on what you think to be true. Um, validating those assumptions is doing the research uh, and, and taking the time to make sure that you have a third party uh, source that isn't subjective that can tell you like, oh, well, statistically 34% of Instagram users researched where to find a therapist near them in the last three weeks. So clearly there is a market there for, for using self-help products or self-help content on that app. So that's something where if I had just gone on the assumption that everyone on Instagram is happy because that's just what I see, it would have been a very expensive op um, decision, either in missed opportunity, missed revenue, or making the wrong decision and creating something that doesn't actually cater to people because I just made the assumption that it would, it just would. Um, so people asking questions is helpful because it makes us say sort of like, do we actually know what we're talking about? Is this just something that I had from opinion that I've been making very expensive decisions on? And then it also helps us validate our reasoning. Um, a good PM is able to walk through their thought process without showing self-doubt. Um, so in that way, it helps me to say like, if someone says, hey, Nafisa, like, why did you prioritize that story first? And I could say, well, you know, based on these blockers that are happening and for this other team, if we even create this feature now, it won't actually be effective for the user until, I don't know, Team Red finishes their, their next sprint. So we thought, let's prioritize the next important thing. And then that engineer could say, hey, that actually makes sense. Or they could say, wait a minute, I actually know how to help that team unblock whatever it is that they need to work on. I can go take two hours to help them and then we can actually move up and work on that thing that actually is more important. And in those questions and those conversations, you help the team work better. You help yourself have better insight to once again, establish trust with the people that you work with every day by being open to answering questions and opening and answering questions well. So that is a balance. You have to be able to answer questions without, with confidence without trying to bullshit people. And I think a lot of times you'll see the cocky PMs or the PMs that are a bit insecure but aren't right in the growth place being cocky. Um, you mentioned OKRs, how much data, how much does data analytics play into the PM role? Lisa, that's a great question. Um, and my apologies if I'm saying anyone's name incorrectly as well. But honestly, data is everything. Uh, the better the p environment means the more data is, uh, is um, apparent or available for PMs to use. Like I mentioned in those assumptions and validation discussion, you validate data. I mean, you validate assumptions with data. Some people tend to think data is just numbers and that's not always the case. Data can be findings from user interviews. Data can be industry research on Navient or other um, like companies' websites or, or data provided by researchers. Data is extremely in, is helpful. Analytics is part of data, but analytics isn't it isn't one to one, if that makes sense. So analytics is really a part of what you put in place as you're building your product to be able to use like Firebase or Adobe Analytics to track like drop off and, and and where people focus their eyes on the page and 
And uh, which, if you have a page, for example, that you spent a lot of time working on five years ago and you're trying to understand if it's worth spending the developer dollars, I call developer dollars how much it costs for someone to create that feature, the developer dollars to work on that page, it's helpful to know if only 3% of your users have gone to that page. If 3% of your users have gone, Three percent of your users have gone to that page. You have to ask yourself: Is this page useless? Is it even worth spending time on? Or are we missing something that would improve this page that that we can do in a streamlined, effective way? So, data and analytics is extremely helpful, but it's data and analytics are two different things. All analytics is data, but not all data is analytics. Um, Alisa, let me know if that if that was helpful for you. Awesome. So then, as a PM, where do you get your insights and research about users from? This is why user designers are so important. Like Laura, who just did the keynote, uh, I work hand in hand with my user designers. I actually, like my user designer that from my previous job that I left, I wanna say last, ooh, a year and a half ago, he and I still get drinks, we still hang out, we still laugh about product stuff because those, those people are the closest to the users. As a product manager, you will never be the closest to the user if there's a user designer on your team. Their full job is to really understand your user's pain points and what makes the most sense for their user without even considering the finances. They're a great partner when you want to get more insights about user research. A lot of times as a product manager, especially as like the product manager where I am in my career, I will tell my user designers what I'm interested in learning more about and they can run me back. They'll say like, oh yeah, we'll set up some interviews, to talk about that. Or they'll say, oh, we actually already did research about that. Go check out this whimsical, this graphic. The, these uh, notes to learn more. So that is really where PMs get user research from. Also competitive industry research. I am online all day looking at habits of people and you'll find sort of like the butterfly effect. Learning about how childhood trauma affects people's brains as they're adults has made me a better product manager because in a very like, well, it could be sinister if you look at Facebook or Instagram, but it could also be altruistic. In a way, learning about all the things that make a person tick helps you to build a product that they will enjoy and want to use. So that's where like, honestly, where do I get my insights and research about users? From everywhere. I'm constantly reading. My friends joke that I always know the most random stuff, but you would be surprised at how your experience as a business manager in a nail salon can help you build a product that works better for users who are in a rush don't think that you're like throwing away your life experiences prior and you're starting from fresh to be a product manager. You'll find that product managers come from so many different kinds of backgrounds and that's because everyone brings their life experiences to the products they build. And as a product manager, it's actually more helpful to have those diverse experiences to be able to support your team. Let me just move on to like the last two keys really quickly and then we can go straight Q&A. So then key number four, fall in love with the problem like Beyonce did. No offense to all the JC fans out there. Uh, every new product manager has to start somewhere. There was a time where I didn't even know what how to run a story mapping session and I was Googling it on the job before the story mapping session. While you may not have six years of product experience right now, if you show a genuine passion for the problem in the problem space like Beyonce did, and you have a voracious appetite to better yourself, you instantly become a stronger bet for any company that's, that's taking a chance on you. So for my example here, right? I mean, we all know what happened there, but Beyonce learned her partner and, and was willing to forgive her partner and learn more to be able to get to the solution that she wanted, even though she, she had not been a wife prior. So if you are a new product manager, you're looking to get into product and you are, you know, you don't have like a pro bono experience to refer back to, I would recommend you look at your interests. If you're really into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and stock, um, specifically cryptocurrency, like get into like a fintech crypto based startup and, and, sh and in your product interview, talk about all the research you've done on in the industry, because those are already skills you're going to need to do as a product manager. But if you show you have a passion for it and it's exciting to you, they're going to take the, they're going to believe you more that you're willing to do the above and beyond work to be better at your job to solve that problem. So if you're a new product manager and you're looking to get your first job or whatever, start with what you already have an interest in. It could be fashion. It could be music. Um, it could be, I don't know, basketball um, and, and learn more about that and show in your product management interview how you learn a lot, uh, you've learned a lot about that problem and it's personally passionate for you so that they're willing to make more of a, a bet on you. 
product managers, like I mentioned, have to keep an eye on the market and industry trends. So be sure to highlight or fake it till you make it like I did with private aviation, had never flown on a jet before my job, but I was like, I just love traveling. And one day I want to be rich. So I wanna learn more about private aviation and private jets. And that's very interesting to me. And eventually I did get to fly in private jets because of my job, but I did not give a damn about aviation in that context, unless it was a flight deal, um, until I got that job. And, and it, honestly, it has made me, after my experience at Wheels Up, I am a lot more interested in private aviation and, and I've met a lot of great people that work in that space, but I had to fake it for the job, for the coins. Um, and then research the industry on, you uh, research the industry of the company you're in on any new product interview. Now that I'm on the other side and I help, I actually, I actually help companies define their practices for hiring product managers. And I also help with the interview process at my company. Um, it's, that's one of the things that we really notice is like, Hey, that person actually mentioned that they know what we're doing with Pivotal Tracker. Like that's, that's really important. They'll be able to help our clients learn how to use Pivotal Tracker because they actually care. So you ain't onto this, don't think they onto this. Like you better come in there and feel like you know more about that topic area than any other candidate that's there, even if they have six years of product experience, because we don't care if you've worked at Staples for seven years, if we're a private aviation company and you don't know anything about, I don't know, a King Air 350. So then key four, thank you for, uh, key five, thank you to the Jay-Z fans, let me go through that unscathed. I was uh, preparing for some backlash there. Be able to say no, prioritize, and say why. Find your way back to your vision strategy, your product strategy, and what your team is trying to accomplish. So people are going to ask you for a lot of stuff as a product manager. In fact, another role as a product manager that I should have put on that screen with the different tasks is the bullshit shield. Your job is to protect your engineers and your designers and your test engineers from all the people that come in and say, hey, I was just thinking I had this random idea for a feature. And even though I don't know anything about tech, I just feel like I think this would be a great product. Can you just throw this in your backlog and put this in the app? It's your job to have people come to you to do that so they don't annoy the developers who, let's face it, culturally, they don't want to talk to people anyway. So you're going to get a lot of people asking you to throw things in the backlog and you have to be able to say no. And it's really awkward to do that when you're the only black person, when you're 10 years younger than everyone and when you're new to the industry. But they're going to respect you if you're able to say no affirmatively and say, I'm protecting my team's interests and the things that you are paying me to be here for. So if you want me to get these goals done by Q2 of next year, we're going to put that little cute pink elephant that you want to twist around on the loading screen to the, to the back end. So like I mentioned, people are going to ask you for a lot of stuff. And it's really awesome when you can say yes. Like, I feel like a god when I'm like, why, yes, I will grant you your wish of having this pink elephant on the loading screen. But it's going to it's going to add up. And then when when then what happens is those same people that wanted you to add that pink elephant on the loading screen, when your team is two months behind, they're going to say, well, why are you two months behind? If I thought you were on top of this. And that is you can't say, well, you wanted me to do all these things because your job is to be the person that set that states what's relevant and what isn't and sets the tone to accomplish things. So it's so important to just find your way back, know your center, have your voice and know what your team is trying to accomplish. And ideally get your team ahead of schedule so you can throw in some of those things that they want that are the what we call nice to haves. They're not critical, they're not necessary. So I also can be asking to work Saturdays for no reason. I am the work-life balance queen. I take a break at 10.30. I take a break at 3.30 for 20 minutes every day. And everyone on my team knows like, oh, it's Nafisa's break time. You're gonna have to catch her after. I am a work life. You're not asking me to work on a Saturday if it's not life or death, which oftentimes it isn't. And so you're going to have to really be able to say like, you know what, for me to be the best product manager I can be for you in the long run, I'm not working 60 hours a week because I'm going to have to quit and then you're going to have to find someone new. Being able to really assert yourself, showing you have respect for yourself, <laughs> it helps other people have respect for you. So as a PM, a lot of times, especially unless you're in a startup, that's like a whole other dynamic where you're actually signing on to like be a martyr for the cause. But we can talk about startups in the Q&A after. Um, learn to really like define your boundaries for both yourself, your team and the people you work with so that you can focus on what you need to to get what you need done. And then everyone's going to applaud you and say, oh, my God, it's so amazing that you're able to do all these things. And it's like, yes, because I told you no to that thing three weeks ago that you were upset about for five minutes, but you've already forgotten. So just make sure that as a product person, you are balancing, protecting your uh, people from, you know, the bullshit of people coming up to them in the middle of the day while they're working and asking them dumb things. And you're also protecting yourself because it is so important. The tech industry is not going anywhere. 
And to be quite honest, if you're a good product manager, you will always have a job. I get like 10 job interview requests a, a week at this point, literally. So if don't like, don't kill yourself. Don't let this life drive you crazy. As Beyonce says, like focus on the task at hand and build sustainably. So Beyonce, I mean, Jay-Z shade aside, if you've liked what I've heard so far and you're ready to go kick the product world ass, here are some three actionable things you can do today, even after this session. Although I recommend you stick around because there are so many more gems in this text gaming summit that we've curated for you guys. Find two PMs and interview them. You'd be surprised at how much people love talking about themselves. Like they'll be shy and be like, oh, really me? And then they'll talk your ear off and it'll be two hours past the time. And you're like, all right, I gotta go. But thank you for sharing your journey. Learn from someone who's already figured some of it out so you don't have to. I shared some of the things I've learned. I'm especially, I think, culturally, I'm a, usually a very soft-spoken, quiet person. I don't like confrontation. But a lot of these things I had to learn the hard way after some, some rough bumps to get to where I want to be financially, career-wise, and even just enjoying my work life. Consume product content regularly. I am not a big reader. Um, I think I mentioned this in the text. If you guys aren't following us on Clubhouse, follow us on Clubhouse at Text Giving Tribe. We had a great Clubhouse conversation Thursday night about like how to actually get the job once you have the skills. Everyone's talking about reading books. I don't have time to read books, to be honest. I've tried audiobooks and I think I'll get back into it again, but that was more so when I was flying Monday through Thursday, so I was just on a plane anyway. But I like podcasts, how I built this, the product person, the $100 MBA, consume con uh, product content regularly to learn more about industry standards, lessons learned, and things that people are doing. The more you actually learn the language as well, the more comfortable you'll be moving in product spaces and the more, I don't wanna say elite spaces you'll be in, but people will just trust that you're supposed to be there. Talk to your devs. Someone asked me how technical I was. Girl, I'm not technical at all. The most technical experience I had before entering the tech industry was changing my MySpace profile to have like a cute little mouse and adding like Lil Wayne to my music. I'm not super technical. I love technical stuff, but I never went to a boot camp. But how I got where I am in my job is befriending my developers and asking them questions and shadowing them. The more you learn about how developers make decisions while they're building code and writing stories, the better you are at writing product stories and knowing which stories make sense to go in which order. Get their opinion on the technical factors in your roadmap. When you include them in the creation of your roadmap, they're also more excited and more bought into it. They'll become an evangelist with other developers on your team because they had a part in it. And you're more likely to make something that actually will work technically. And not only do we all have something to learn from developers on our teams, Developers love a PM that respects their importance. Like I I have the developers to this day that I worked with years ago that check in on me and try to like get me to come to their companies because they hate PMs that don't respect their intelligence and try to, like I said, be the know-it-all that doesn't actually know anything. So that was my five keys to success in product. I hope all of you learned something that is applicable for your careers. We are now opening the floor up to questions. And I know you guys asked some questions that I missed. I was trying to answer throughout with Pace as well. So we have eight minutes. I'm two minutes behind schedule, my apologies. But I'm gonna start with uh, Brianna. How many products do you typically work on in a quarter a year? Like I mentioned, I'm in a consulting role. So my experience is a little bit unique. I would be staffed on six to seven products in a year, six to seven different companies, six to seven different locations, which was fun when you're trying out new foods and you're not in a pandemic. But um, when you're on a, like in industry, you might only have one team a year, you might have three. It just depends on the structure of the, of the company. And if you're like in a startup or if you're in a larger organization and like how many products are actually in their product suite. Uh, let me see. <laughs> Nidra say that I live with this at work all the time. Clients always asking for random things. They think you don't have a, you're not a real person. They think you just exist to serve their needs. So you have to define it for yourself. Uh, where can we find your slides? I am more than happy to share these out. I also think these sessions are recorded so you can, um, go back and see it, but also feel free to just reach out to me on LinkedIn and I'm more than happy to share with you the link because like a civilized person, I use Google Drive primarily. Uh, let's see, if taking an internship for product manager role, would it be more beneficial to take a PM role at a large tech company versus a PM role at a startup in order to get up to speed quickly? This is a good question, Kevin. I think there's actually no wrong path. The goal is to get experience as soon as possible. Um, I think it also depends on what your personal goals are. If you want to accelerate your career very quickly, I would say go start, um, and skill-wise, skill-wise, I would say go start up. If you want to build a large network quickly, I would say go large tech company because you're interacting with meeting people, making those LinkedIn connections, and you have the cachet of a well-known name. 
Let me know if that answered your question, Kevin. Um, what podcast did you suggest? Okay, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to open my Spotify to look at my podcast really quick. So I listen to Bigger Pockets, which is like a bunch of real estate investors and entrepreneurs. I listen to How I Made This, um, Hundred Dollar MBA, Freakonomics, Design Matters, which talks about like why design matters for business. Um, and I think that's the main tech. Oh, this is product management, which is just, as you can imagine, straight product management. In addition to Scrum Master, what other suggestions do you recommend for PMs? Oh, so many easy certs. Okay, so for more expensive things, I don't like to spend money, but sometimes you want to invest. Kellogg, Cornell, and Berkeley have great product strategy and product management certificates. They're also like the top 10, uh, top 15 MBAs in the country. So it's like getting a mini MBA for your area and they they upskill for tech people in their traditional MBA roles. So I definitely recommend those if you're looking for like more formalized long-term. Short-term certs, certified Scrum product owner, certified uh, Scrum master, and then agile practitioner. It's like certified agile practitioner, CAP. Those are three very quick, I'm talking three days you have a cert and they last for two years. And like I said, like uh, you're positioning yourself to be a better product manager. So when you add those things to your LinkedIn or to your resume, it supports you getting picked out in situations where there's a resume algorithm that's looking for certain keyword matches. Very straightforward, time-wise certs. And you also network with more people and can ask questions in those sessions. What are some common misconceptions of the PM role? That you're a CEO, you are not. You, you are not in charge of anyone. You are not hiring anyone. I hate seeing people who get into tech for the clout and they get into product management for the clout thinking they're gonna be a mini boss. You are an executive in your own way, but you are not a boss. And the more you, and the sooner everyone gets over that misconception, the better things are going to be. Believe me, the, the, the developers talk shit about these PMs to me all the time, so I hear it. Um, I am a scrum master with no technical experience. I'm currently a success and implementation manager. How can I pivot as a PM? Melita, that is a great question. I would say um, being able to start working on like a body of work, find an app that you really like and like break down the research you would do on the customer markets and like identify a feature that you think that they should work on and then literally create a pseudo backlog for what that would look like. Create that as a digital portfolio per a website and then add that as a link to your resumes. I think that being able to show how you think is very helpful. And for me, and when I'm looking to help my company get PMs, um, we, we look at how people think, because if you don't know the lingo or you don't know extreme programming, which I did not at all, um, it's a lot easier to teach someone that thinks well and thinks critically than it is to find someone who, who does know extreme programming lingo, but they don't know how to break down a user segment for an app. So I definitely recommend that. And feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn after if you would like to talk more about that, because I, I'm not technical to this day. I think I'm going to learn JavaScript in the spring, but that's where I am. So thank you guys all for joining this session. Um, if there was anything that you need more clarification on, feel free to reach out to me after. Everyone at Thanksgiving, we've been working really hard this year for you guys. So please make sure to just, just give a dollar, you know, just a little something to help us. We then give poor black and brown kids their first laptops, access to consistent Wi-Fi to check hotspots so they don't have to learn these things when we learn them. Awesome. So I'm going to play some music to play us out. Thank you guys for joining. These sessions are all you in the main room.